is and will be. We take our hands off it, and we allow you to express yourself amongst us here today in Jesus' name. You've uh, concluded this is Sunday we partake of communion. But I want to go back to the Passover that leads to the Last Supper when Jesus celebrates the Passover. And, uh, and then he institutes communion where we remember his once for all atoning death. Once for all atoning death. But first I'd like to, I'd like to go back and just briefly take a look at some of the events of the first Passover in B.C. 1491. What was that, Lynn? Well, it's when Israel is about to leave Egypt. And they were told to get the Passover lamb. Leave it, in, leave it watch it. And it was a lamb without blemish. I'm not going into a lot of detail because this would take days. And we're going to do it in the next couple of minutes in part. And this all found in Exodus. And of the scriptures basically we're using here this morning. The Passover lamb was slain representing a lamb for a family or a lamb for two homes depending on size. The lamb's blood was applied to the sides and the top of the doorposts of the door. And God said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. That was lamb's blood. Think about that. But his commitment was, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. The Lord will not suffer the destroyer to come into your house to smite you. He told them. Now, what happened is Egypt's firstborn died of men and animals. And he unsettled, God unsettled their gods. Israel's firstborn was protected. And Israel was delivered from Egypt. From Egypt, they left. It hit me this week. If I remember right, they got gold and silver and precious jewels from the Egyptians as they left. Is that right? Is that what I remember? And they got it in abundance. They actually used it for building material and put it on their clothes. That's, that is wealth. But an enslaved people left. Now you say, well, they probably went rocking down the road, all excited. Yeah, they got excited, but not always good. Have you ever noticed that? <laughs> yeah, yep, yep. In the ninth stage of their journey, they came to Mount Sinai. And uh, God told them, if you will. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if you will. You will be a peculiar people a kingdom of priests, a holy nation. And there it was. Now you'd like that, wouldn't you? Yeah. So they said, all together, whatever God says we'll do. Yeah, hello. And God manifested himself. How'd he come? Just as they expected? No, 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 no. Nope. He come with, he shook the mountain. He had lightning on the mountain. The mountain smoked. And so on it went. He didn't come as they expected him to come. We need to expect him and allow him his expression when he wants to express himself. Hello? That's cool. Just as when he comes along and rings our doorbell and says, we need to straighten this piece up. I'll help you. No different. Okay. So, after the smoke, and smoke, after the lightning, they backed off. All these scriptures they had, but we're not going to use them because I forgot to tell you about them. All right. They then said to Moses, you go speak for us, and we will hear. 
Let not God speak to us lest we die. How sad. Wasn't his intent to kill him. He just wanted to come. Wow. Now, 1,500 years later, 1,500 years later, the promise is recorded by Peter. Let's, let's do that. Uh, 1 Peter 2, 9, and we'll go on to 10 then, I think. Sound familiar? Now, this is, this is some 1,500 years later. Peter records this. And here we go. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Wow. A chosen generation. Now, that generation is not a 40-year span or anything else. It is a, it is, in Greek, it is kinship. It's a race. It's a nation of people. We are a chosen nation. In Christ, we are a chosen nation. We are not, are we not, the kingdom of God? We are the kingdom of God. He put, and sometimes the kingdom of God is more real to us than the surroundings about us. Or more valuable to us? They're both valuable, don't get me wrong, but I'll take the kingdom of God. We need to take the kingdom of God. We are a royal priesthood. In the old covenant, you could not be a king and you could not and be a priest. You could not be a priest and be a king. Under the new covenant, we can be both. Kings and priests unto God. Uh, Revelations 1, 6, I believe. Uh, and he has made, a, made us, past tense, he has made us kings and priests unto God. And his father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. It backs it up in Revelations 5.10, and there you are. But uh, in this new kingdom, we are a new species of being in this kingdom. We as children of God are are. are there's never been anybody like us. No. I've never seen you and I before, Jackson. No, we are, we are unique. Huh. Because we've been, we've been created by Christ. Ephesians 4.24, let's, let's use it. Bill says, their scrolling is in there. <laughs> okay, you put on the new man, the new species of being, new, which after God is created, or God created you in righteousness and true holiness. He created you of himself. Wow, Lynn, are you, are you, have you got that right? He did, he literally created us of himself. We, wow. Hmm. You know, he took us from the kingdom of darkness, put us in the kingdom of his dear son. Now, 1 Peter 2.10, if, if we can. Which in time past were not a people. You were not a people. Gary's words, heathens. We were heathens. We were not partakers of Israel. We were heathen. We were not a people. But now are the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Whoa. You know, at some point, you may have had, we did have an identity crisis. All right? Now, so, from the Passover back then, from the short time later at Mount Sinai, they were, they were always instructed to maintain and participate in the Passover. Jesus institutes the first Lord's Supper or communion during the Passover meal in 33 AD, approximately 1,500 years after the first Passover. Now Jesus is preparing for his sacrificial death. 
He's preparing for a sacrificial death as the Passover lamb, 1 Corinthians 5, 7. Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye were unleavened. But even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Christ is our Passover lamb. John the Baptist put it this way in John 1, 29. Behold, he introduced Jesus. Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Not just the sins of those he knew would believe on him, but the sins of the world. He took them away. Everybody you meet, their sins are already forgiven in Christ. The issue is, we must believe on him. Matthew 26, three verses in that a run of 26, Matthew 26, 26 through 29. Uh, and we're going to, and you've got, it, you got notes, you've got the wrong, ver, wrong chapter. It says 16 in your notes, it's really 26. And as they were eating, they took bread, blessed it, break it, and gave it to the disciples, said, take, eat, this is my body. The body of the Passover lamb. He took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them and said, drink ye all of it. This, this is the blood of the Passover lamb. It once was put on the doorpost and the lentil. Verse 28, and this is my blood of the New Testament, the new covenant, signifying what God had done for us, which is shed for many for the remission of sin. I want us to just take a moment and consider this. Under the old covenant, it was you do, and ye shall live. Under the new covenant, it is done, and that includes Hebrews 8, 6. Uh, yes, let's do this. But now has he obtained a more excellent ministry, the, the, the perfect Lamb of God, the Passover Lamb for you and I. He has obtained a more inner excellent ministry, by how much also he is a mediator of a better covenant. All right? Based upon, established upon what? Better promises. We who are of the new covenant have, it's, let me just read it then. It's a better covenant established upon better promises. From a God who cannot lie. Wow. 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 Believers, this side of the cross and the resurrection, on this side, it's already complete in us. Colossians 2.10, the Amplified. <laughs> Ready? Be braced, it's been a while since we've read this. And you are in him, you who believe are in him. Made full, have come to fullness of life. In Christ you two are filled with the Godhead. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit. And reach full spiritual stature. He is the head of every rule and authority. Where does he dwell? in you and I. He is, because he was and is, the spotless, blameless, Passover lamb, so to speak, for us. He is the head of all rule and authority over every angelic principality and power, and then he took and moved you right along with him. Oh. Stuff. Let's let's go to Hebrews nine. Okay, here we are. There is no, no, no eternal redemption until Jesus Himself provided Himself as our sacrifice. Agree. Suppose anybody disagrees? We got, an, we got scripture for them if they do. Anybody want to disagree? No, you don't want to disagree. 
I want to keep going here. Look at, look at this right here. Look at it. Nor yet that he should offer himself often. He, he doesn't die every time you sin or do something wrong. For some of us, we grew up in another society that would not, that would have caused us to swallow just a little bit. But we would have been, think ourselves of guilty of death or some other thing, some transgression. Nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest entereth into the holy place every year with the blood of others, of bulls and goats and others. Never went in with Christ's blood. And he had to go in every year. He went in with safety features. He went in there because he was walking into the presence of God. Uh-huh. There's a lot to go along with that story, too. Because sins at that point was only covered. They were not removed other than covered in as much as Jesus had after his death. He went and preached to him. I will tell you that. Find it in Hebrews 9, 10, 11, somewhere in there. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. That was what he did. He put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. How many? He appeared to put away once in the end. What did he call that? Once at the end of the world, and it's already gone on 2,000 years. Hello. Yeah, something to think about, isn't it? Our responsibility, according to John 16, 8, is to believe on him, Jesus said. Now, note with me, please. It's not the acts or the action a man that justifies. It is the act of God that justifies. All sin was placed on Jesus. All sin was placed on Jesus by God's design. Pretty simple, isn't it? I think so. All right. Hebrews 9, 12, saying this. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in, how many times? Once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. He went right into the holy place of heaven himself and took his blood there. Uh, reasons for that, which we'll not go into. Now, this is a good thing. But Hebrews 10.10 10 also strengthens this. By which... Will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. All right. 14. By which will we are, we have been due to a past action, sanctified or set apart through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. 14. By one offering he has perfected forever them that are sanctified, set apart. Let me do this with you. Jesus, the perfect, complete sacrifice, is our substitute. Our Heavenly Father examined Jesus and found him worthy, without blemish, and accepted his blood instead of our blood for the atonement of our sin. One, the Lord provided the provision before we had the need, actually before we were born in our cases. Two, God the Father thought we were worthy of life, of his son. Now hang on. Three, wow, what a value the Father placed on us. Catch that? And then on the world, because he gave his son. What a value he placed on us. You think you're just barely getting along? That's not how God views you. You were worthy of his son. Wow. We remember this is truth. Now, God's view of our position. Hang on. You're going to bear with me. I'm going to read to you.
for a little bit. God's view of your position and my position. I believe he looks at us as resurrected in Christ. Oh. As believers in Christ, we are resurrected with him. Let us remember this. Let us become living witnesses of Jesus. I am in Christ. And I will remember. These next comments are going to be taken from Romans 6, 4, and 5, and we're not putting them on the board. i just like us to sit here and listen. God's view of me is as follows. And may I see myself the same way. I have been planted in the likeness, the copy, the image of his death. I have been raised in the likeness of his resurrection. God views me as resurrected in Christ. I am walking in the newness of life. From Philippians 2, 6 through 8, my Jesus was in the form of God. My Jesus took upon him the form of a servant. My Jesus was made in the likeness of man, found in the fashion of man. Jesus was seen in a resurrected body by his disciples. Jesus, the last Adam, was made a life-giving spirit. Then join me as one spirit. I am, we are sons of God, children of God, join heirs with Jesus. I stand before God as seated with Jesus at God's right hand. I have a spirit as well as a soul and a body. I am a spirit being. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. God created me in the newness of life, in his righteousness and holiness. I am a new creation. Amen. I, my, I admit my intellect and my body needs to catch up. Oh, that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. God hath blessed me with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. The Word tells me so. God has chosen me in Christ to be holy without blame before Him in love. This was according to His good pleasure of His will. I was accepted, highly favored in the beloved. Jesus' flesh bore my sins. With his stripes I was healed. Jesus' blood shed for the remission of my sins, established a new covenant, a better covenant with better promises. I conclude with two very positive Bible statements. Positive and powerful. 1 John 4, 17. Herein is, my, is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. <laughs> because as he is, so are we in this world. In this, that's what it says. That's what it says. I'll have boldness in the day of judgment because I am as he is in this world. I am that right inside me. While we are not Jesus in the flesh, our spirit, which is one spirit with him, is exactly like him. We're playing catch up with this thing up here, intellect, will, and emotion, and this body. Hang on. Are you ready? Jude, and I'm going to stand up, turn around, and look at this. Jude 1, 24 and 25. Now, unto him that is able to keep you from falling. You have to make a choice to fall. Brothers. Sisters, he is able to keep you from falling and to present you, listen to this, present you faultless before the presence of his glory. In Christ, he presents us faultless before the presence of God. You say you're beside yourself. Is that what it says? Glory. I don't understand glory. Vine says, 
It is the nature, character, and actions of God in self-manifestation. It is what he is and what he does. The presence of God. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. I guess he'd be happy and you'd be happy. Everybody's happy. This is, this is awesome. Just awesome. What does that do to you and your fellowship with him and your prayers? Huh? Huh? I've been presented. I've been pre John, we've been presented faultless. When I pray, what does he see? I am in Christ. I'm seated with him. Well, well I'm seated with him. I said earlier, I don't know how many people picked up. When you, when you stand there, you're seated with him. I don't care if you're standing up, sitting down. I'm, I'm with him. He represents me to the Father. And he says, they say, I'm faultless before the presence of the glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, to be glory, majesty, dominion. Wow. Dominion. Dominion and power, authority, jurisdiction, liberty, both now and forever. Now and now. Now, today, and forever. Amen. So be it, I agree, I will remember. Huh? I will remember the Passover lamb. I'll remember the lamb that taketh away the sin of the world. We're going to remember here in a few moments, Patty. Wow. Think about that. Wow. When we go to him, how do we go? Let's take the two family groups on the back. Or the one family group in two parts. <laughs> wow. Is that, is that good? It, that is good. That's telling you where you stand. Can I make a confession? I didn't know those two verses were there. <laughs> I come across them. I found something that referred back to them, and I read them, and I said, oh, that ought to just spice up one's fellowship with him and prayer. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Let me just read it. I want to read it again. I'll read both of them again. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. While we are not Jesus in the flesh, our spirit, which is one spirit with him, is exactly like him. Jude 1, 24 and 25. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, to present or confirm you faultless before the presence of his glory, God, <laughs> in manifesting his character and actions, what he is, what he does with exceeding joy, the only wise God, our Savior, our Deliverer, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, authority, jurisdiction, liberty, both now and forever. Amen. So be it. I agree. I will remember. Amen. So, all right. Father, we're now going to remember some more by partaking of the bread and the juice representing your broken body and your blood. We're going to do it together, and we're going to thank and praise you for this manifestation of what the, Jesus showed his disciples to do. Amen. Glory. <laughs> Amen. We're doing it. We're doing it. You're doing on your end. We're doing on our end, and we partake with you as you taught us to. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. You would like to come to the, those that want, come to the center aisle. And uh, 